20. Helldiver. I should have known what Tactus would do. He killed his first Primus, Temera, in the Institute. He only ever followed strength. Only ever sought victory. I knew he was a beast. But I thought he was my beast. I thought I could trust him. No. I thought I could change him. I curse myself, arrogant fool. I stalk back to the cockpit, where Augustus addresses the blue pilot. Pilot, will you be able to take us clear? No, Dominus. Geomet models don't show a probability of escape. Her response is fittingly blue, emotionally distant, efficient, and declarative. Her body is thin, faintly avian, like she's made all of twigs, neck long, bald head slightly smaller, eyes large and as uncannily azure as the digital tattoos of her skull. When she moves, it's as though she's submerged in water. Asteroid-born, judging by her flat accent. What is the likely scenario? They will destroy our engines with rip-wing fire, precipitating a hull breach that will kill all aboard. Alternatively, precipitating a leechcraft assault, capturing all aboard. Or they'll just blast us from the gory sky, several adds. Blue, deliver me to my ship, and you will receive command of a frigate. Augustus offers. I would prefer a cruiser, she notes. A cruiser, then. Very well. The blue adjusts several knobs. I will fly well, but the paradigm must be altered before they engage our vessel, if we are to survive. The stork climbs towards the edge of Luna's atmosphere. The ship is a big-bellied beast, fat with storage room, because all they're meant to do is birth soldiers out of their tubes in their guts. Men like me would tear her apart in our rip wings. We use ships like this in the academy to launch men in star shells at enemy asteroid bases. Friction fire wreaths the ship. If the hull is breached, hold your breath, Domini, the pilot instructs. We don't have sufficient survival helmets aboard. Victor frowns. Our lungs will explode if we do that. Then exhale, the blue replies and have thirty secs of life while eardrums explode and blood vessels swell like inflated balloons. I will hold my breath. Several looks back at me, wide-eyed. I hate space. You hate everything. We pop clear of Luna's atmosphere. The fire fades, and we slip into open space, where the Armada's capital ship glide like behemoths of Europa's deep sea. Gun turrets dot their hide like barnacles and hangar bays slice their undersides like great gills. Commercial ships float slowly along the shipping lanes. Rip wings and wasps go about their patrols. None pay heed to our presence, except those that escort us from Luna. The Sovereign would not broadcast this. Time ticks away. There is nowhere to flee. We thought to pass just under the guns of the Scepter Armada when we had Lysander but now we'll have to run the gauntlet. Our pilot is calm as metal. She said the paradigm must change. What can I do? Think. Think. We will open communications to one of the ships, Augustus says. Bribe them into sheltering us. Every man has a price. We're jammed. Can't even broadcast, Mustang reminds him. We're going to die. We all know it. Augustus doesn't panic or surrender resolve. I don't know how I thought he'd handle death. Maybe I hoped he would wail about and turn pale. But for all his faults, he is stalwart. After a moment, he sets a bony hand on Mustang's shoulder. She flinches, surprised. Whether missile or boarding craft come, die like gold, Augustus says solemnly to us not because he wishes us to think him strong in his last moments, but because he believes in what he is, a superior being, a master of his human frailties. For him, death is merely the ultimate frailty. Humans whimper when they die. They claw for life if there is no hope. He will not. 
death is not grander than his pride. Golds, in many ways, are so like reds. Hell divers go to their deaths for their families, for the pride of their clan. They do not whimper when the mines collapse around them, or when the pit vipers come from the shadows. They fall, and their friends weep and sweep their bodies aside. But we have the veil to look forward to. What have the golds? When they perish, their flesh withers, and their name and deeds linger till time sweeps them away. And that is all. If anyone should claw for life now, it should be the Aurid. I claw because I carry the torch of something that must not die. Must not go out. That is why I grab several on the shoulder and with a horrible, eerie laugh, tell the pilot to take us closer to the deadliest ship in orbit, one which now has angled itself to intercept us. Take us near the vanguard, I repeat to the blue. That would cause our chances of survival to decrease by... Never tell me the odds. Just do it, I command. Everyone turns and looks at me, not because I've said something strange, but because they've been waiting to turn and look at me. They've all been silently praying I would marshal a plan. Even Augustus. Eo said people would always look to me. She believed I had some quality, some essence that gave hope. I rarely feel it in myself. There is none in me now, just dread. Inside I feel such a boy, angry, petulant, selfish, guilty, sad, alone. And yet they look to me. I almost break underneath their gaze, almost wither away and ask someone else to take the reins. I can't do it. I'm small. I'm just a liar in a carved body. But that dream must not be extinguished. So I act, and they watch. You've gone space mad, Victor asks. When they realize they don't have the boy, draw an angle toward the vanguard's bridge, Mustang tells the blue. Augustus gives me a curt nod, guessing what I plan. Hic sont leones. Hic sont leones, I echo, saving my last look for Mustang, not the man who hanged my wife. She doesn't notice. I leave the bridge with Severo at a dead sprint. Something hits our ship. Her hull shudders. They know we don't have Lysander. Howlers! Get up! I shout. Harpy throws up her hands. I thought you said, Up! I roar. Red secondary lights bathe the launch bay in bloody hues as Severo and I load ourselves into the cold star shells. It takes two howlers each to help us slip into the robotic carapaces. I lie in the armor as Harpy buckles my feet into the stirrups and closes the armored legs over my meat and bones. The howlers are fast in their movements, even as the ship lurches with another near-missile strike. A siren howls, reporting a hull breach. I try to slow my breath as Victor fits my head into the starshell's helmet. Good luck. She leans her face close. Before I can stop her, she presses her lips to mine. I do not recoil, not this close to death. I let her lips apart and cling warm and comforting around mine. Then the human moment is over, and she's gone, lowering the massive visor of my helmet. My howlers howl and hoot at the sight. I can't help but wish it was Mustang who sealed me in this tin can and kissed me goodbye. But then the digital display owns my vision and I disappear from my friends into the metal launch tube. I'm alone and scared. Focus. I'm cocooned, belly down, in the spit tube. This is where most would piss themselves, separate from friends, from the warmth of life. There's no gravity in the tombs. It isn't pressurized. I hate the weightlessness of it. I can't look up or my neck will break when they launch me. I can't move side to side. My star shell is latched into a thousand tooth-like magnetic hooks. They click into place like tiny insects, chattering. In moments, they'll shoot me into space. My breath rasps. My heart rattles against my sternum. I drink in my body's terror and smile. 
They said this was suicide at the academy when I wanted to launch myself. Maybe they were right. But this is why I was made. To dive into hell. I'm a beetle of a man in a carapace of metal, weapons, and engines that cost more than most ships. I've got a pulse cannon on my right arm. When I need it, it will bloom like a hamanthus blossom. I think of the time Eo laid Hamanthus before my front door. The time I plucked one from the wall on the night that I was supposed to win the laurel. How far away those warm days seem from this cold place. Where petals are metal instead of soft like silk. We're getting pinned in. Boarding party's imminent. Mustang's voice comes over the calm. Priming your launch. The ship moans as another missile almost claims us. Our shields are shot. Just the rickety hull holding us together. Aim true, I say. Always, Darrow. Her silence says a thousand things. I'm sorry, I tell her. Good luck. This is not fun, several groans. The ship's hydraulic system hisses and the metal teeth jerks me forward into the tomb, loading me into the chamber. Inches before my head, the magnetic stream of railgun hums dreadfully daring me to glance its way. They say that many golds can't take this, that even peerless can panic and scream and cry in the spit tube. I believe it. Pixies would have heart attacks right now. Some cannot even ride in a spaceship for fear of small places and the fastness of space. soft belly fools. I was born in a home smaller than the cargo bay of this ship. I made my life at the end of a claw drill that makes this tube look like a child's toy. All while sweating and pissing my soul away in a fry suit cobbled together from scrap. Still, there's terror. Watch how a pit viper strikes, my son. Father once clutched me by the wrist and made me play this game. Watch it coil upward and upward till it reaches its crust. Don't move before then. Don't strike out with your sling blade. If you do, then it'll get you. It'll kill you. Move just when it's coming down. Do that with the terror in life. Don't act till you're as scared as you'll get. Then, he snaps his fingers. I'm at that point when the music of the machines take hold. The clicks and the clacks, the hisses and the hums reverberate through the hall. A countdown begins. Ready over there, Goblin? I ask several over the comm. Cacadnir assistant Silvis? Does a bear shit in the woods? The ship spins and shudders. More sirens howl. Latin. Now. Aurentes fortuna juvat? Fortune favors the bold. You deserve to die if that's really going to be the last thing you say in this life. Yes. Well, you may suck my... My heart sticks to its downward beat. The metal teeth jerk me forward into the tube's magnetic stream. And it happens. Even through my suit, G-forces hit me like the backhand of the obsidian's thunder god. My vision flickers black. Stomach rises into throat. Lungs constrict. Blood slows in my veins. I snap forward. Lights flicker in my eyes. I don't see the walls of the tube I'm shot through. I don't even see the ship that brought me here. I see Eo's face in the darkness. I black out. Bodies can't take this. Too fast. Darkness. Then the darkness has holes. Stars. There's no mean time. One second I'm on the ship. The next I'm ripping through the deep of space at ten times the speed of sound. Many shit their suits at this point. It's not a fear thing. It's biology and physics. The human body can take only so much. Make it the carver made sure mine can take just a little bit more. I hope several's can too. I rip soundlessly through space. Trust that Severo is near me. Can't see him. Even on the sensors. All too fast. Toward the greatest ship in the Scepter Armada. The one we should avoid. It all happens in six seconds. Emergency missiles streak past us. The gunners see us now. Know what's happening. 
but we're not using thrusters, so the missiles can't lock. Flak can't detonate on so short fuse. The unspent canisters fly past us, nearly hitting me. Our pilot took a perfect shot. Railguns miss us. Projectiles flash past. Several was howling in the calm. Their shields are down. They can't bring them up fast enough. It takes time. Iridescent blue flickers over the hall as the pulse shield power up. Too late, you sons of bitches. Too bloody damn late. I can't think. I'm screaming inside, laughing like the flames of a wildfire. Laughing, because I know it is my madness that these logical warriors cannot fight. The bridge is close. I spare a look up. See golds inside, roaring at one another, rushing to their evac suits or escape pods, staring at us approach like Mustang did when my horses of House Mars crashed into her and packs in a muddy field. Our rage is something unique, something these loonborn don't understand. Blue scatter. Obsidians pull their weapons. Two golds don breath masks and unfurl razors, readying for the kill. The second before we hit, I shoot my pulse cannon. It thumps on the thick glass. I shoot again and again, then I curl into a ball and smash into the thick bridge glass with the full velocity of my launch, as well as a last second burst from my thruster bolts. Out of me roars a madman's scream.